Warning. This podcast may contain spoilers for whatever TV show or movie is mentioned. Please listen at your own discretion. Welcome to viewers and others. I am Scoots Bronson. And I am Estop Foster. That's right. You tune into another episode of the Viewers Anonymous podcast where we give you our very own reviews and takes of movies and TV straight out of Hollywood. Ladies and gentlemen, today we have um, a very interesting episode for you today um, because this movie here um, is, I, you know what? I, I don't know how we going to, I don't know how this episode is going to go, bro. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I'm gonna be honest with you. I really don't know how this is gonna go. So okay. um for for everybody that's uh you know what I'm saying listening or watching or whatever it may be, um today we are covering Insomnia. This movie came out in 2002, and uh this movie is about two Los Angeles homicide detectives who are dispatched to a northern town in Alaska where the sun does not set and they are investigating um a murder of a local team. <clears throat> now reading that synopsis knowing what this movie is about now to be honest with you i hated this movie bro oh shit yes i hated this this is this is possibly the most unnecessary al pacino movie i could ever <laughs> i'm being all the way real and there was and and I and I know that you know what I'm saying Robin Williams. I think like this was his one of his like moves into like trying to get that like those serious roles mm-hmm. where like he was trying to get away from like the comedy thing. And I know it was a little bit later too, but hey, bro, a, a, a unnecessary Robin Williams movie as well. This whole movie was unnecessary. Dude, I completely disagree with you. Because I think that this is what Robert Williams is really like before he passed away. Like okay. I felt like I felt like this was him. Like if Robert Williams, the person, I'm not saying that he, you know, beat up, you know, a teenager <laughs> and I hear black belly cops. I'm not saying that. Okay, I'm I was about saying, to say because <laughs> was going was a little weird, man. I'm saying the the way his demeanor was, mm-hmm. I just felt like this is what he was like. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, for the people who were around him and talked about him, you know, when, when he, you know, when he transitioned and everything, and they were saying that he was, you know, kind of a loner, like he wasn't funny all the time. Mm-hmm. They were just saying that, you know, he was just really like a, you know, pre- pretty much like a straight guy, but he was just funny when he wanted to be funny. And I felt like, like seeing him in this, I just, just me, I just got this inkling of like, dang, this seems like this is what he would really be like if he was to meet him. But yeah. I disagree. First of all, if you want to talk about Al Pacino, an unnecessary movie is 88 minutes. Now, this movie, <laughs> now that was unnecessary. Yeah. But no, like, see, I fought with it because the whole fact of like, and then I like how they got right into it because. Yeah. First of all, it's like, yo, why, why, why would you go? You, you, you lost, you lost Angeles PD. Why are you going to Alaska mm-hmm. to help? You know, what I'm saying? solve a crime. <laughs> okay, listen, because <laughs> I went you on that, but the reason, right? I assume that he was going there because I'm like, this nigga must be like a fucking sleuth. Like this nigga must be like one of the. This nigga must be like Batman, one of the greatest detectives. Was ever because I'm like <laughs> the reason that they send this nigga all the way to Alaska must be because whatever he was doing in LA, he was knocking shit down. Like what well, he was solving shit in the blink of an eye. He had to be. But finding out how he end up solving this last, you know what I'm saying, case, I was like, oh, this nigga's a piece of shit. So throughout this movie, you realize this nigga's really just a piece of shit. Now, my one beef with this movie, okay, my one beef with right. this movie. Is the fact that they are in Alaska during the time that the sun doesn't set, so it's mm-hmm. daylight twenty four seven. You know what I'm saying at this time in Alaska, which is a is a real thing. I appreciated that, but why didn't they just get blackout curtains? 
Do I was thinking the same thing. This nigga Y'all got this lodge. <laughs> this nigga take the windows with fucking cardboard paper. I'm like, bro, just go buy blackout curtains. They were available in 2002. Yo, first of all, this hotel is supposed to have that, period. Like, what hotel in Alaska ain't got blackout curtains? When you know. Also, I'll, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Because no, I'm just saying, because when, when you know during that time of the year, you know, it don't get dark. So it's exactly. like, that's just common sense. Fam, like, I don't understand why they, they got have it. they have blackout curtains in hotels in Ohio. <laughs> so, <laughs> I know for sure they could have had blackout curtains in that hotel. Second, nigga, take a nap. What I the mean, fuck is going on? Just take a nap. Well, it's a I mean, whole it's scene. Not... It's a whole scene in this movie, bro, where they literally trying to solve the case, but they're falling asleep trying to solve. Uh, just go to sleep. Man, for, now see, now see, this is the thing. School, this is what you're forgetting. You know what I'm saying? It's yes. called insomnia for a reason, all right? This <laughs> motherfucker couldn't sleep. <laughs> dude, he couldn't sleep because all of the shit. Yo, this dude gets up there, right? He's under investigation. Right. Brent, this is the By thing. federal affairs. Yeah, but this is the thing. The reason why he goes up there in the first place is because the dude that runs that police station worked with him back in L.A. So he asked him for help, but the reason he was willing to go is because I'm under investigation, motherfucker. Get me Absolutely. out of LA. <laughs> like Absolutely. So and what I did the snitch on him. Yeah. And who tells their partner? Yeah, let me tell you something. <laughs> if we get involved in some shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna tell you if I'm snitching on you, bro. Yeah, I'm not gonna tell you when we in fucking Alaska. <laughs> like, I'm, with you. I'm totally with you. I'm just gonna snitch on you. I'm not gonna he deserved, you. he just uh, look. I shouldn't say this, but he deserved to get shot. <laughs> I agree with you 100. percent He Yo. first and foremost, he was unnecessary in the movie. It was there was no reason to have him. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you what they could have did with that part. That I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you how they could have fixed this whole thing. He could have been shot before he even got to Alaska. And him coming to Alaska was him leaving because he covered up him getting his partner. I mean, him killing his partner. That would have made more sense than him, you know what I'm saying, putting fraud on the case. This yeah, nigga man. suspected a nigga of being a pedophile. Set the nigga up and got the nigga locked up. <laughs> hey, bro. Hey, bro. Get this nigga out of here, man. He's a dirtbag. I mean, look, man. The way the way the way he explained it to Ogre, now, now that was just one of those situations where it's like, hey, this shit has been brewing on my brain. And that's what I'm saying. That's why he couldn't sleep. He he shot his partner. You know what I'm saying? Then he knows that uh damn, what's the name? Uh he know Walter know about his ad because Walter been calling him, telling mm-hmm. him every single thing that's going on when he ain't even there. So he got all of this stuff going on his mind. And then you got Burr all up your ass where it seems like she could be a good detective, but it's like, you know, it's, it's she just she just needed that extra push or whatever. But like, no, my man deserved to be shot. I, and I hate to say that, but it's yeah. just like you don't tell somebody, yo, I'm going to cut a deal. You know what I'm saying? As soon as you get to get to Alaska, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because like, yeah, dude, I'm. First of all, you already know I'm planting evidence. Right. And then you're going to tell me that you're going to snitch on me when we get back? Like, nah, bro. You ain't living. I'm sorry. So, I'm going to find a way to <laughs> find a way to <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's really get into this, right? So we have an amazing cast with this, right? We got Al Pacino playing Detective Dormer. We got Robin Williams playing Walter Finch, who's a uh, author. We have Hillary Swank playing Detective Burr, um, Martin Donovan playing Detective Eckhart, and um, you got a, a bunch of other people in the mix as well. But those are those are like the main characters. Um, <clears throat> and so Dormer ends up killing Eckhart, right? We we got him out of here midway through the through the movie because once again there was no reason for this dude to to be on there. He didn't already told on himself before he went to go tell on somebody else. Like he he's like the super snitch in this movie, and then like you said, you got you got Walter Finch 
calling this nigga every 30 minutes, telling him uh, all about the crimes, everything that's going on. Um, which to me was was goofy because I'm like, if we if we gonna do this right, at least like make this nigga like the Riddler, like make this nigga work for it. You really just breaking down <laughs> the whole case. You giving this nigga all the answers. And I understand what he was doing because he was setting up. Uh, what's the what was the boyfriend's name? Oh, the boyfriend was uh, I just looked at old dude, uh, Randy. Yeah, so he was setting Randy up because Randy was the boyfriend, but he was smashing her best friend, right? So it looked like a you know what I'm saying like a crime of passion type thing, a some revenge type thing, which. I get it. This nigga write books for a living. You know what I'm saying? Of course, he's able to create this type of narrative. I, I was like, yo, this nigga actually was the perfect killer. I'm not mad at that. I think that was a, a great way to set up a killer because what what other way, you know what I'm saying, would you want somebody to be a killer than a nigga that make crime novels? I'm like, yo, this that was actually genius, right? Mm -hmm. But like we said, this nigga is constantly calling this nigga Dormer and just giving them all the information. So, couldn't nobody up here hold their water? You know what I'm saying? Then, <laughs> nobody was holding their water. Um, <clears throat> I forgot what the... Uh, what's her name? Rachel? Was Rachel the one at the desk? Uh, at the desk? Yes, Rachel, yes. Yeah. So, Rachel, right, at the... When, when he breaking down what he did to, you know what I'm saying, to get hit by internal affairs she like yeah it's only two people that come to alaska right it's people who were born here and then there's people who are running away from something i'm gonna be honest with you that didn't make sense to me first and foremost if you're running away from something right you don't go to another part of the u.s America. yeah <laughs> That's what I was like. that didn't make sense to me you know what i'm saying now, now, if you go to Hawaii, I get that because that's a long way. You got some time to do some shit. It's still, it's still a state, and you still can get locked up, and it's still, you know, what I'm saying U.S. jurisdiction with all the laws and shit. But I get it, right? It's further away. But going to Alaska, bro, all they got to do is ride the coastline. You out of there? All they got to do is make a phone call, my nigga. You out of there? You know what I'm saying? It didn't make sense to me. Um. But she had a secret too. I, I, I don't even remember if she told she her. Did, secret she didn't right. say it. She didn't she just say was it. She saying she had a secret, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Get her out of there too. Unnecessary. She, she could have just been in the beginning where she gave them niggas the keys. That's all we heard of her. It was unnecessary. Um, nah, see, I, I disagree because I felt like the reason I disagree is because I felt like he was. Sleep. That's one of those situations where no, well, that too, <laughs> yo, you stupid. <laughs> no, like you know, like when when you when you just got this burning secret inside of you, and yeah. it's just like you know, like you want to get it out, but there's nobody that you can really talk to, and mm -hmm. then like she just became that person that was available to just listen to him. He needed somebody to listen to him, and I felt like if look, I don't know what happened after the scene because she was asleep, right. And he, you know what I'm saying, you know, walked over there. So I felt like after getting that off his chest, he might have been able to take a nap or some shit. Because I think he just had so much shit weighing on him. Like, you you sitting here, you got you got eternal affairs on you. You mm -hmm. shot your partner. You trying mm -hmm. to cover that up. You having to go and shoot a dead dog and take the bullet out of him so you can have, you know what I'm saying, this bullet and say, you know, switch the bullets from his dead right. partner, all this stuff. So you got that going on. You got you know what I'm saying? Uh, why I keep forgetting her name? Burr, she figuring this shit out here and there. Then you got Walter telling you that he killed this dude and talking about right. setting up the damn kid. He just got so much going on. He just wanted to get something off of his shit. And, and it's daylight 20 before he got them. 24 7. No black curtains. Like, I mean, my man, my man came and said, yo, he said, I want to, he said, I, I want to go to the, he said, I want to go to the kid's school, get him in front of everybody. They were like, uh, that's going to be impossible. He was like, why? They're like, it's 10 o'clock. He's like, yeah, I know. <laughs> At night, <laughs> he was like, oh. Nigga, yeah. he didn't have a clock. 
<laughs> that's what I'm saying. None of this shit makes sense, man. <laughs> all this shit is stupid. How? First and foremost, how do you go all the way over to to Alaska? You know the time. The time zones is kind of iffy. Not even that. If it's daytime outside, you just assuming that it's 10 o'clock in the morning. You don't know what time it is around here. So I already know you unaware of everything that's fucking going on. You just get in there hype once you see the other cops. Yeah, we're going to catch somebody. Man, sit your ass down first and foremost. <laughs> Learn the lay of the land. You can't just go in there guns blazing. That's not how it works. <laughs> get some oh, info. Do some reconnaissance, nigga. Hey, hey, you see, he, he did. He did. He, at some point. I thought the bag thing was smart mm -hmm. when they found the bag and then they ended up putting the bag back and yeah. then he went to go find it because that's one of those things where, you know, you can't because what he did with the body by cleaning the body, clipping the nails and all that type stuff. And even he had said that to Walter when he said, yo, why did you, uh, he forgot something. Well, he was talking about the bag mm -hmm. and he was like, you know, you, that's one of those situations where you can't catch everything. Right. And that's why, you know, he was trying to do everything. That's always a thing that's like, I don't know, I'm trying to think of something where you kill somebody by mistake or by accident, whatever the case may be. So you're sitting there trying to cover your tracks and then you forget something the stupid as like. Yeah, panicking. Yeah, you, you panic and you end up leaving something behind and it's like, fuck, that's going to link me to, see, that's going to link them to me. This is this is why that pisses me off too, okay? Because this nigga was detailed enough to set a whole nother nigga up to to run the cops around for a whole week, but he panicked when he caught a body and he didn't get everything. But he he meticulous and everything else except for the murder, the actual crime. He 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 ain't got nothing going on with that. He fucked up right there. But everything else though, this nigga is. Fucking the Joker. Oh no no no! I know what it was. It was his book. He yeah, forgot gave his book. Away. Yeah, that gave everything yeah. away. Yeah, that's and, and he was like, "That's what I forgot." He was like, "I forgot that you know she had all of my books or whatever." And but so he was who, like, a, "Real quick, because I don't mean to cut you off, but real quick, let's let's just keep it one hundred. This bitch is in high school. Okay, she is in high school." Why is she talking to this man? No, this is the thing, though. If she has a book, <laughs> it could have just been reading class. <laughs> like, that's what I'm saying. None of these, these niggas what, is thinking. What, well, she had all of his books and the autograph one. So it would have been a situation. That's fine. She might she might have fell in love with this nigga's books during reading class. That don't have shit to do with me. <laughs> nigga, I signed the book. So what? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, let's keep it 100, bro. Like, this nigga really could have got away with this shit if he would have just kept it a G. Well, the reason, well, the reason he told them that he had somewhat of a relationship with her is because he wanted to be able to tell the whole story of I knew that Randy was beating her because she confined in me. But then, even with that questioning. Why that do the 17 year old know, girl trust you enough to just tell you like, yo, my boyfriend is beating up? Not even that. Why would why she do you have to voluntarily? Use, why do you have to use the fact that she was in an abusive relationship when all you had to do <laughs> was lie and say I met her one fucking time at a book exactly. signing and leave it at that? That's what I'm saying, bro. It was that's why I said this shit was unnecessary. It, it was it was too much filler, way too much filler. First and foremost, let's change the movie from Insomnia to something totally different. Let's we we let's figure that out later, but let's change that out to something totally different because the insomnia part was unnecessary. This nigga was up for six days straight, and these niggas these niggas don't see that he's sleepy or nothing. They just going with the punches. He just coming in making decisions. Let me be honest with you. You can tell when the motherfucker's sleepy. <laughs> you just mean to tell me that nobody realized that this nigga was sleepy? Man, come on. You know they were saying, yo, detective, like, you ain't been getting no sleep. So don't let him <laughs> do stuff. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, bro. That's what I'm saying. Hell, even Burr was nodding off with shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, nigga, come on. It's, bro, it's a lot of stuff in here, man. It's a, it's a lot of red flags in this movie. A whole lot of red flags in this movie. First and foremost, he went to go get a young girl in high school. 
and interrogated her. That's against the law. You cannot do that. Her parents have to be present. <laughs> Nigga, he took her to the dump where the body was. He took her to the crime scene. <laughs> <laughs> He took her to the crime scene just to get the information. Come on, yeah. fam. What is what's going on? This nigga is a wild card. Nah, she a wild card. She trying to use this old dude to get back to LA because she know he from LA. So she trying to, you know what I'm saying, show the thighs and everything. And she trying to get out of that damn town. Come on, Come man. On, Both man. of them girls. That's all it was. This movie is about <laughs> two friends that just want to get the fuck out of Alaska. So they trying to mess with old dudes to get them out of fucking Alaska. That's all this Which movie is even about. Crazier because this movie was, that's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> bro, we could have called this movie the pedo or something. Nigga, it's, it's a bunch <laughs> of different movies. It's a bunch of different things we could have focused on, other than the fact that this nigga came to Alaska and the sun was constantly shining. Let me tell you something. The sun could shine right now in Ohio all day long. I bet you I take a nap. <laughs> like, it's just it's just certain shit that don't make sense to me bro this nigga was up for six days trying to catch a killer then he Yo. hallucinating and shit he almost got them ran over by a dump truck like bro it's just he's he's he's, uh, he's reckless he's reckless i mean he's definitely reckless but his mother was dripping blood on some underwear drip, the blood on his damn on his own damn shirt like yeah, like he's he's definitely like you could tell in a way he had flashes of being a really good detective because there were some things that he thought of and it's like you know what that that was pretty smart like the way he put that together all this little stuff yeah, like absolutely. even when he even when he interrogated Randy at the school you know what I'm saying he did that good but he also picked up on when. When uh, Randy was coming out, he seen how the one friend girl was looking like, yeah, he was yeah. like, I'm going to circle back to that one. So I'm going to circle back to that one. Then he got her coming from the damn funeral joint and asked her, because he kind of knew. He knew going over there and asking her that she wanted to ride, that she would say yes. Like, he and knew that going that into it. Odd. Nobody thought that this random man showing up at the funeral giving this girl a ride was... Uh, Something that's just set off alarms. This is the same thing that w when we had those conversations about, yo, like where are the parents? Yeah. Same thing. It's the same yeah, thing. Yeah, because, yeah, once again, yeah, why wasn't her parents at the funeral? Ain't, ain't that supposed to be her best friend? The, it's, it's the same thing, man. These parents don't <laughs> be existing in these movies, man. I don't know what's going on. Hey, man, minor details, man. Minor details, bro. Like, it's just, I, I'm going to be honest, man. I sat here and watched this movie. And mind you, this is my first time watching this movie. So this ain't something that I've seen before. I feel like with these type of movies, you have to watch them like when ignorance is bliss. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't mm -hmm. feel like 300 episodes into this podcast, I should have watched this movie for the first time. Because it was <laughs> too much stuff that I was pointing out. Like, I'm just sitting here looking at this shit. I'm like, okay, none of this shit makes sense. For instance... We at the we at the we at the bar scene, right? And they all talking or whatever, like towards the end. And Bird sitting there, she, you know, she catching on to something. She like, yeah. yo, this nigga is first and foremost, he he looked like he ain't got no sleep. Ain't nobody still called it out yet. And, and he looked like he about to go do something suspicious. This nigga makes a joke. Yo, who has two thumbs <laughs> like his blow job? <laughs> then he says, This guy. <laughs> Wait. Wait, and then and then the top of the hall off, he tapped Burr and go, sorry, fam. <laughs> Come on, man. Even in 2002, that's egregious, bro. That's <clears throat> super fucking egregious, bro. Like, uh, what, what are we doing here? I feel like wherever they was at in this town, because I don't know. I think, was they in Anchorage? No, well, they I, think they made, I think they made up the name of the uh the town they was in because it was something uh no the, the, no the other town was um or um um or something like that yeah that's where he was from yeah so that was a whole different place but i want to say there was an anchorage right so everything about this town in anchorage just seems like they was behind the times 
You feel what I'm oh, saying? Definitely. Like everything about this just seemed like they was behind in the times. I didn't see no digital clocks. You know what I'm saying? Well, it was I one seen, digital clock. He had the digital clock in his room and he put it in the um thing. He didn't put it to use. He he didn't put it to use at all. I didn't uh I seen a lot of talking on like house phones. You know what I'm saying? I thought that was weird. Everywhere they was going, a for a phone had a cord on it, and in 2002, that really wasn't, you know, what I'm saying like it wasn't far off, but it was like way too many corded phones for 2002. Because by I that mean, time, like cell phones was popping. Yeah, and but they still could have had the wireless phone. But most most phones that the police yo. I'm thinking about this shit. At the hotel, I understand that. And maybe even, the police even, maybe even at the police station. I, I'm I'm with you. But where else did they go that they had a wireless phone? Everywhere they went, nigga, a phone had a cord on it, except for maybe a cell phone or two. Yeah, because even even at um even at my dude's house, Walter's house, he had a he had a cord phone. I expect you know what? That was the only t- time i didn't find that odd because i expect somebody like him to have a you know he's an author he's one of them artsy dudes so i expect somebody like him that like that nigga was wearing a, uh what's that a cardigan and shit so i expected that that wasn't like out to, <laughs> that went out the loop for me you know what I'm um but it was it, it's just it's too many weak points in it, it too many weak points in this movie um and i feel like what they tried to do was they tried to cover like the plot holes Right, like I think that's what that was the whole thing. They was just trying to make sure it wasn't really like a lot of plot holes in this film because for them to, like you said, they instantly got into it with the whole murder thing. He get there, they already getting into the case. They already doing what they got to do and investigating stuff and all that. He meeting everybody and you know saying everybody's on the job. As you're going along, they're constantly filling you in as to what's going on with not just the actual case in question but with him as well you know what i'm saying like the the conversation between him and uh eckhart in the car and then you know what i'm saying him killing that car and all this other stuff and break it just they just broke down it, it it broke down too much it was a lot of stuff you could have cut in the film it was a lot of stuff you didn't necessarily need to have in the film i feel like honestly if they never would have just had eckhart there and they would have just was like uh Yo, we gonna bring him to Alaska because, or he's coming to Alaska because of a favor, but secretly he's under investigation by Internal Affairs, and they don't really know. I feel like that probably would have been a better way to do it, but yeah, it was it's it was a lot a lot of stuff going on, and I just felt like what wasn't necessary for this film. Well, <clears throat> well, when you think about the fact that it's Christopher Nolan, I think like names that come to mind for me when it comes to people who don't like to do a lot of editing and cutting things, it's mm-hmm. Christopher Nolan, Martin mm-hmm. Scorsese. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like they just, uh, they don't like cutting shit. They like to really keep everything in there. Very attention to detail. Maybe mm-hmm. sometimes, like you said, sometimes it might be too much detail. But it's like, Way yo, we, we, we could have, we could have cut some of that. But I think that what was cool about, how they kind of dissolved that situation as fast as they did because when they was flying in you know they was kind of mentioning the stuff a little bit about what was going on in la and then as mm-hmm. soon as they go uh to the restaurant they go get something to eat boom eckhart tells him yo i'm cutting the deal which is a hell of a way to break the news to your partner yeah because he lost his appetite he was well, hungry. That, nigga, we was on the plane the whole time. You could have just told me that. You wait till we fucking sit down to eat after we done settled in and all this other shit. Nah, man. Yeah, like don't, like don't tell me now. And then, like I say, the next day he's gone. Yeah. And and what makes this movie, well, in my eyes, I think is interesting, just the fact of when he shot Eckhart, he thought that nobody saw his ass. And then the mm-hmm. next day he get the phone call from Walter. Because I thought, because we're just on the opposite ends when it comes to this movie, I thought that that's really what made this movie interesting. Uh, the whole factor where you're trying to catch this killer who kills this girl, 
then you kill your partner and then the killer drops his gun and then you pick up the gun and then you shoot your partner and then he saw you the whole time to the point where now my because in this situation you know how we'd be like yo this movie could have been 15 minutes mm -hmm. like if he would have been just like yo i don't give a fuck what you saw like now at the same time he didn't have no evidence on him so it would have been tough to try to bring this guy in when you didn't have no evidence and now all of a sudden this guy's like yo like well he shot his partner well okay real quick um when i'm trying to think the phone call part right where he had called him or whatever when he was looking through um the diary he was looking for the information with the diary and the dude leaned over and was like hey you gotta it's a phone call for you and finch was on the phone after he got off the phone with finch he then finds out about the book and then the, the town and all this other shit, right? Mm -hmm. I feel like at that moment when he was looking for the diary, because he kind of had a notion as to what was going on once he had talked to, what's her name, Kay. Mm -hmm. When he called and said that, hey, bro, ain't nothing to talk about, my nigga. You a suspect now. Yeah, you suspect. I, yeah, I don't give a damn what you come in here and say. Oh, he shot his partner. Because he, because he kept saying, because she said they caught he something Brody or whatever. He instantly knew to either go to the diary or go look at that book. If you know to go look at that book, you know who wrote the book. So now this nigga's a suspect because why would who is this Brody motherfucker? And the only place that's at is on the book, right? Yep. So yeah, that conversation, my nigga, ain't nothing for us to talk about. Yeah. Go go tell go tell who you need to tell. Let's see. I'm the police, you not. Let's see who's who who they believe first. Yeah, whose story are they gonna believe? Exactly. I think that but I think that he knew that the, the, I don't know if maybe the intimate de details that he knew mm -hmm. with him already being under investigation, maybe they like, yo, like this is a little sketchy. But then at the same time, you also got to understand another thing that he was worried about, and it's probably another reason why he couldn't sleep, that if he was found guilty on those charges, every single case that he was involved in, they're going to go back and go look at it now. Yeah. Exactly. So that's one of those situations where it's like, yo, that shit will weigh heavy on you. And I think that's why he didn't act on it and was kind of playing the whole little game at first to get the boys set up because mm -hmm. he's like, yo, if – if every single case, well, not every single case, let's just use the last case. So the last case where he was tampering with evidence. Right. Now, I come to Alaska. I'm helping y'all with y'all shit. We get the drop on this dude. We arrest him when he becomes yeah. a suspect. And then he comes in here and say, well, my, uh, Domer shot his partner. I sat there and watched him when y'all was chasing me in the fall. Then they're going to be like, oh, shit. Because... If they arrest him off of what Dahmer says, mm -hmm. they're going to be like, okay, now this is another person that's just going to be released. Because I don't, agree. I don't agree. Because he already okay. did the work to shoot him with the other gun. Or quote unquote, shoot him with the other gun. So No, no, no. I'm talking about, I'm talking about Walter. Like if Walter go in there and start telling them what that's what, what I, yeah, did. That's what, that's what I'm talking about. Dom Domer already did the job of quote unquote shooting him with the other gun, right? So yeah. at the end of the day, nigga, this ain't just a random gun. You know what I'm saying? It gotta be registered. Yeah. So whose gun is it? It's Walters. Why were we why were why were we chasing him in the first place? Let's 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 break down the facts. Why are we chasing them in the first place? So we randomly chasing them. All of a sudden, my partner get hit. The bullet came from his gun. Who do you really think shot him? I mean, like this nigga. That that's what I'm saying. Like the the stuff that's going on, it ain't really connecting with the characters because it's like he brilliant enough to say, put the books in the book bag and take the book bag back, and then say we looking for the missing book bag. But you not brilliant enough to be like, 
Oh, nigga, you already set up. The bullet didn't come from my gun. But see, that's what I don't understand, though. Because this is the thing. He he had a gun in his hand. Mm -hmm. Then he switched guns and right. shot him with the, with the other gun that he had. And then he picked up uh, Walter's gun. Because remember, the the cop that Don, uh, Donald was standing beside got shot in the leg. Mm -hmm. So that bullet ended up going straight through. Mm -hmm. And they were searching for that bullet, which they ended up finding it. They found out what type of gun it was. It was from mm -hmm. a 38. But um, Eckhart was shot with a 9mm. Right, with a pistol. But he shot, that's when he shot the dog, got the shell casing up out of him or whatever. And then he switched it when he went to go sign for his body or whatever. So those right. bullets had to match. So he had to find a way to make those bullets match because if they pulled the bullet out of old dude and he was shot with a nine and the other one was shot with a 38, then like, yo, Dharma, what this dude is saying, at least got some validity to it. Nigga, so he had, two, he had two guns. But that's what nigga, I'm saying. He, he dropped this gun too. Like, nigga, you already lying on shit. Lie, lie again. <laughs> like, this, that's what I'm saying, man. No, this shit just don't make sense. If you're gonna be a corrupt cop, be a corrupt cop. Well, I mean, he was being a corrupt cop. I just don't know why he's. I think what it is. I think that he got one police issue gun and a, just another gun. I think mm -hmm. that he just carries two, so he didn't shoot. What I'm saying is, remember, didn't nobody know that until the end. Cause uh bird bird hugged yeah when she gave him and, the hug so then nobody know that to the end nigga this is his gun I mean this is true this <laughs> like that is true. It's plain is, and simple what what do you think about her about to be like nobody has to know but us and she was about to throw the bullet and he told her not to um be honest with you. I felt like once again, like that that bar scene, it told everything that it, it really, it really like gave away everything that we was about to find out. You know what I'm saying? Like just the the way that she was watching him. She was real suspicious of him. She wasn't really paying nobody else attention. And then she kind of knew what was going on once she felt the gun. Like she had the idea of all of that shit, right? So her knowing that her even changing her mind on it i feel like the only reason she really changed her mind was because of the shootout if it wouldn't have been a shootout i don't know i, I don't feel like they could have wrote her feeling that way i feel like they would have had her like at odds with that like okay so we know that he's up to something but we're not really sure i feel like the shootout kind of confirmed everything like okay this dude really did it. this nigga shooting at us with a shotgun from across the way which shout out to that shotgun and shout out to his reloading time because he was exquisite yo, with that shit. Yeah, there's no way this <laughs> nigga got a two shot shotgun and I got a fuck, I got seven bullets in this clip. And you mean to tell me I'm waiting for this nigga to reload every trip? Nah, that's crazy. Yo, hold on. What's worse, that shotgun scene or Bishop and Juice with a with, the, with, with 12 six bullets shot. and a six? It, Come on, bro. Come on, bro. What? What's worse? Because both of those is bad. That's it's, bad. Well, I'm I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm gonna be honest with you. Because it was the 90s, I'm not mad at juice. I'm really not mad at juice because it's a possibility, right? That he could have shot them six shots out of the chamber, uh-uh, and reload while he was moving. It's a possibility of that. I'm mad at this one because he shot him. Now, <laughs> I don't know if you ever, I mean, you you from the South, you know what I'm saying? You've been around some country people. So I know that you know that with a two with a double barrel and a two-shot shotgun, you can really just boom and a, a shell will pop out once they've yeah. been used. That's a feature that's on guns. 
it was definitely a feature in 2002. I know for a fact. <laughs> so you mean to tell me this nigga is popping the fucking chamber open, pulling the shells out by himself? They hot shells. These aren't these aren't just regular shells. The shells are hot. They just had an explosion on them. He pulling them out, and then in one scene when he pulling them out, you can see him shake his finger like that because it's hot. Like, what are we doing? He did that multiple times. So you mean to tell me between this nigga pulling out hot ass shells, reloading shells, you know what I'm saying, loading the gun back up, pulling the motherfucking hammer back to shoot at y'all, you couldn't have you couldn't have made no no progression. You had to do the fucking uh Navy SEALs move by having her distract them and then you break through the, the floor and walk up the creek and then catch, come on man. It's just it's a lot. It's a lot, bro. That thing that was horrible. That was yeah, horrible. That is hilarious. Nah, it was like, but the thing is, like, we've seen this plenty of time in movies, and I think people who aren't as avid movie watchers as me and you are, mm -hmm. because like, obviously, when I was younger, I didn't think about like like Juice. I didn't think about it being absolutely. fucking six shots in that damn gun. You know what I'm Absolutely. saying? You're so caught up in the movie where, you know, you're yeah. not really thinking about reloading. Then when you get older and you start watching more and more movies, it's like, yo, we see this a lot, actually. That, this happens said, in a lot of movies. That's why I said, bro, over 300 episodes into this podcast, I should have never seen this for the first time. <laughs> yeah, be, yeah, because like things that you start to notice in the beginning is different. Because like I think about some of the pods that we did early. It's like mm -hmm. damn man, it's like some of these, some of these we need to redo. Yeah. It's like because it's like more information is out. You know what I'm saying? We think a little differently than we did when we first started. It's just like, you know, some of the stuff is just, you know, with time progressing, with us getting older, getting smarter, getting wiser, it's like, damn, like maybe we need to redo some of these. Mm -hmm. But like when it comes to this one, it was just like what I've always digged about the movie was the somewhat chess match that they was trying to play with each other. Like when they met each other on the ferry and they were sitting there and they were sitting there talking and it was just like that whole thing of like, damn, like now I don't know why. And maybe it's because, and that's what I'm saying. Maybe the insomnia part was necessary for this fact. You, he's baiting you to talk about what you did to your partner. Right. And then when he get off the ferry, he shows you he recorded this whole fucking shit. That never crossed your mind that you was being fucking recorded. But like I say, if you haven't slept in three days, you probably ain't thinking that this dude is trying to record what the fuck you're saying. So he could have he, he's he never he didn't think through this whole movie. <laughs> he didn't think he, through the whole movie. He's tired, man. Talk, man, stop. Listen, because you keep coming up, you keep coming up with excuses as to why this nigga never went to sleep in this whole sleep thing, bro. We we come up with multiple solutions on this. Take a nap, you know what I'm saying? Blackout curtains, you know what I'm saying? Maybe try another hotel. It's it's it's, it's a lot of solutions for this. This is this is where I knew for a fact that it's two it's two scenes for me. I knew for a fact that Al Pacino this ain't the movie for him okay the first scene is where he had k at the um at the dump and he was talking to her or whatever and he was trying to do the good cop bad cop thing with himself and he yelled but he sound like al pacino off of any given sunday so i was well, who like, else he supposed to say <laughs> I, don't, I don't know but it was just like when he yelled at her i was like this is this is a lot of any given sunday in this in this scene Second, um, <laughs> I don't forgot the nigga name, man. Uh, 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 Finch. I better call nigga Finkel. Finch, Finch gets away, right? <laughs> okay, this nigga has boots on. He's moving. He's juking. He's going. This nigga runs across a river of logs. Oh, I was about to say that. <laughs> okay, Dormer decides. With with <laughs> with hard bottom zone, I could do it too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro, this nigga fail. 
and as he's falling, you know what I'm saying? Because I don't know if I don't know if if you guys are watching or listening to this. I don't know if y'all seen this movie, but in this scene, this nigga is running across like a river of logs, but the logs are moving down the river. That's how they're moving the logs, as they you know that's how they transport them. Well, he falls in between the logs or whatever, and he's trying to come back up for air. Now, you're not going to convince me that old ass Al Pacino in this in this scene, <laughs> old ass Al Pacino <laughs> fell in the water at random. And he had enough lung capacity to hold his breath for that whole part, find the ladder, climb up the ladder, and swim all the way to the ladder, climb up it, catch his breath, and be cool. I'm not, you're not convincing me of that, bro. I'm sorry. Yo, I'm man. I'm not convinced at all. With that with voice, this, no. With the disrespect, man, that you put no opportunity. And he was in the suit. Yo. Did you see Al Pacino and Righteous Kill? When did Righteous Kill come out? <laughs> Yo, Righteous Kill came out like 2000, like like 15 or some shit. What happened in Righteous Kill? Well, he was the dirty cop. He tried to set up. Uh, of course, I'm saying like like <laughs> what? I'm saying like what? What spectacular thing did he do in Righteous Kill to make you compare this to this nigga holding his breath for three minutes underwater? Man, he was chasing somebody in Righteous Kill, man. With hard bottoms on. Yeah, that's more believable than this nigga holding his breath <laughs> underwater. <laughs> that's more believable than him holding his breath underwater under logs trying to. Constantly go up for air, can't find it. Then at one point in time, he opened his mouth, realized he couldn't do it, closed his mouth, and went back under and kept swimming. So, no, I'm not believing that he was able to hold his breath for underwater for three minutes in a suit and okay. hard bottoms and survive. Not to mention, he was also chasing that nigga in this movie. That was more believable. Like, yeah, I'm sure he can chase Robin Williams. Robin Williams wasn't like the most in shape nigga. Yo, listen. You tell me what's more believable, right? Mm -hmm. The whole log scene. Yeah. Or Al Pacino getting shot like 37 times and telling these dudes that I can take your fucking bullet. You know what I'm saying? Oh, and Scarface. Yeah. 100% Scarface. <laughs> he, was, he was coked out of his mind. What are you talking about? He had, a whole <laughs> desk, he had a whole desk full of the white. Yeah, uh, that's 100% more believable. Hey, I've, seen wild, a, man. I've seen a nigga high of cocaine get tased by six tasers, so I don't know for sure him getting shot that many times is possible. Yeah, that's hilarious, man. You know what I'm saying? There's a video oh, right now on YouTube. Nigga hides a kite getting shocked and he just going ah and running to the <laughs> <laughs> So without a doubt, Tony Montana for sure can take 37 bullets high of cocaine. And that shit was pure cocaine. Whew, One thing I know he wasn't high on was nothing when he fell in that goddamn water <laughs> under them logs. And, and this is the thing. This is the thing. It ain't like he fell and was like, <gasps> you know what I'm saying? Like, he just fell in. <laughs> he fell by surprise. <laughs> Yo, that nigga just please, fell in. So that's what I'm saying. Like, bro, he didn't have no prep time to like catch his breath or nothing. This nigga just fell in, but he was able to hold his breath for three minutes. Oh, Yo, man, please crazy. tell me, please. So this was your first time watching. Please yeah. tell me when you see, because even the first time I seen this movie, when I seen Robin Williams, I mean, he, I'm talking about what he going, yeah, he, he ain't he missing, a, busy, he ain't missing. And yeah. when and when when uh, Dahmer had stopped, he stopped and he looked down. I was like, he falling. <laughs> like, no, I knew, no, no. I when knew he was me, falling. When they showed me the shoes, that's what I said. Oh, it's over. <laughs> He's not making it across it. <laughs> I said, if this motherfucker makes it across here, bro, this nigga need to be in the Avengers. You're not doing that in hard bottoms, bro. You can't you you can, you can't walk across ice in hard bottoms. You know what I'm saying? You can't walk on wet floors in hard bottoms. So you mean to tell me you about to run across a river full of logs? Nah, bro. In a hey, suit? Mm-mm. <laughs> <laughs> nah, bro. Oh, man. Nah, he did, hey, he did it on the rocks, man. When he was chasing him through the rocks. 
He had a hard That's bottom too. Up. He had a benefit. Bro, you <laughs> come on, man. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> What I'm talking about, bro. You running on wet rocks? <laughs> have you have you ever went hiking? <laughs> have you ever have you ever went hiking or have you ever just walked through the woods, through, through the forest, whatever you got it around you with a bunch of trees and shit, and maybe a creek or two, and maybe a lake, a pond. I don't know. Have you ever went anywhere where there's a wet rock? I don't care what nigga Robin Williams in them boots should have fell. So I know for sure in, in hard bottoms, no grip. Come on. Oh man. man. Come Wet on. Wet rocks. This nigga running around <laughs> the Anchorage, Alaska in the wilderness with Stacy Adams on. <laughs> Are you telling me? Hey, you trying to convince me, bro, that this thing is that athletic? Nah, bro. That's absurd. Oh, man. That is fucking absurd, bro. Yo, that is hilarious, bro. That's bruh. crazy. In a suit, Wet too. Don't we had on a suit. Nah. Oh. And it wasn't a tailored suit, neither. That's That shit was off the rack, by the way. Oh, come on, man. All the suits in the early 2000s was mm. off the rack, man. <laughs> nah, nah. That's all right. Was... Take a mind. Go back. Look at. Uh... I ain't talking about the draft. I know the draft was. For... <laughs> yeah, yeah, look at the draft. Yeah, no, 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 no. That's different. Because niggas won't wear suits. So that don't count. <laughs> like they made them niggas wear suits. So I understand. That. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And Steve Harvey had them big ass suits too. So I get it. I'm talking about fucking <laughs> Robert De Niro, Joe Pesci, <laughs> fucking Al Pacino, all of them niggas. They've been getting their suits tailored for a long time. If you go back and watch, matter of fact, if you go back and watch Scarface, the nigga was he had a tailor suit on. So you mean oh, yeah. to tell me this nigga collar. becomes a cop and he just buying suits off the rack? Nah, bro. Man, that's how he was in 88 minutes, man. I'm telling you. Man, <laughs> fuck that. Man, <laughs> 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 This this whole movie was just a bad decision, one after the other, bro. First and foremost, Finch shouldn't have been messing around with no high school girl, trying to be friends with her or whatever the fuck he was trying to do. Tell me, I was her mentor. Mentor for what, nigga? She's in high school. And then he said she was a bad writer. When yeah, she's in high school. Poetry. Have you? <laughs> what good writer was in high school? What are we talking about? Nobody was a great writer in high school. Nobody was a great writer in high school, bro. That is that doesn't exist. You know what I'm saying? That's like that's like going to high school and finding a great mathematician. No, none of them niggas is good at math for real. I'll tell you who was a good writer. Talk to me. Her. Who? Her. The singer? Yeah. Yeah, music writer. That's not the same as she <laughs> she write an essay. <laughs> That's what I want to see. All right, that I'll be impressed. Let me see her her eleventh grade essay. <laughs> then we can determine how great of a writer she is. That's what I'm talking about. What <laughs> music? Yes, I'm sure she was phenomenal, <clears throat> but she could write a song. You know, what I'm saying to do her thing, but an essay. Oh man! And F, what was the what was the format? Uh, <laughs> FMA or F L F M or whatever that was. Uh, yeah, show me that. You you're not gonna find a great high school writer, bro. Oh, she was a, a horrible writer. No shit, Sherlock. That shit was ridiculous, man. And then this nigga was getting busy in the cardigan too. That let's not talk about that. It was some bad fashion choices in this film as well. I mean, well, hell, I ain't fucking Alaska, man. Man, come on. Ain't no ain't no Brooks question. brothers up there. You right. Quick question though. How cold do you think it was in, in Alaska? See, it didn't that's look, my thing. It didn't look cold as shit. It looked like breezy, it, like a, a swift 60 or 50, but it ain't look that cold, bro. Well, see, I looked at where they uh filmed most of it. They, they filmed most of it in um Canada. Um, so you I think they went in Alaska. Well, this is the thing. Some of it was Alaska. Okay. Um, but most so, of it was Canada. Uh, What's that? Britannia Beach of uh, British Columbia, Canada. 
um british columbia canada uh, it do say alaska usa but it don't say like where where okay but so most of them did, did, no wonder they had old coats and shit because it's in canada yeah so i i because i thought about the same thing when he fell in that water it was like dude like you supposed to be like exactly <laughs> like there's no way now i know now i don't know exactly how alaska worked but i'm pretty sure when they have like the 30 days of night or whatever it's colder then then mm -hmm. it is when you got the sunlight or whatever absolutely but cold is cold and that's a different that, type of cold that's all, all i'm saying is this if niggas got on coats and you fall in the water with a suit on come on bro you just oh, yeah. out here making nigga ain't catch a cold. You ain't, you ain't see this nigga take no Nyquil, no nothing. Bro. Yo, this nigga just trucking. This little right here with buddy. insomnia. He just trucking around the Anchorage with insomnia. <laughs> no, not come on, bro. <laughs> come on, man. I, just, I listen, people, people out there under the sound of my voice, please just hear me out. Go watch this movie if you haven't seen this or you haven't seen it in a while. Just go watch this movie and watch how absurd this movie is. Watch how, watch how preposterous they make Al Pacino look in this film, bro. Like they make this nigga look like John Wick. The man, get out of here, come Wick. on, bro. Come on, bro. When he was when he was fighting Finch, nigga got hit in the head with a glass jar, and he shook it off like nothing happened. Yeah, but he shook that off, but that, the adrenaline That's was running, man. Come on, man. He shook it off like nothing happened. You get hit in the head with a glass jar, then get shot by a little pistol, and all of a sudden the world ends. Come on, man. Nah, he wasn't bleeding from that glass jar, or nothing. Man, look, man. He was a trooper, man. Talking oh, about man. nigga had insomnia, bro. He did all that <laughs> insomnia. This nigga was delirious the whole time. What is that? That's what I'm saying, man. I told you, man. He saw his partner walking with the damn search crew, man. He was fucked up. But he was a, he was cool enough to devise a plan <laughs> to distract Finch. <laughs> he go get this nigga. Come on, bro. What is we talking about, man? This nigga was up for seven. He was up for a whole week by that time. Oh shit! So I just seen something. What's up? Right on the trivia shit. Mm -hmm. So do you want to know who was considered to be Will Dahmer? I'm hoping it was somebody like Brad Pitt or Tom Cruise or one of them. Harrison Ford. All right, <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Can we move on? All right. Can we please move? On? Can we please move on. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, bro! All right, let's get into the coming soon. I don't even want to continue talking about that. Just pissed me off, bro. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> In two thousand two. Two thousand two. Hold on, bro. Let me let me. I got to see something real quick. What movie came out with Harrison Ford in two thousand two? Because what? Okay. Well, dude, you gotta you gotta also remember, like, dude, he just he just did another fucking Indiana Jones like last year. Man, I'm talking about in 2002, bro. Have you seen the last Indiana Jones or Harrison Ford? Yeah, Harrison Ford is. He like, wasn't doing a lot of moving and shaking. I can guarantee you that. Dude, he, he did, had Shia LaBeouf in that motherfucker, like taking the brunt and everything. Dude, he did K nine. The widow, K the widow maker. This nigga was in the military yeah. suit, so he wasn't doing shit. Dude, he did Hollywood Homicide in two thousand three. Man, <laughs> <laughs> you sounded so disappointed. <laughs> because man, you not bro, you not you not about to convince me, bro, that this nigga Harrison Ford was nigga like like. The the other option with so many with so many people out there that this nigga I'm not gonna lie to you this might be the worst Christopher Nolan film ever. Nah, I think it's that. What is it? Met, meta Meta Topio Memento. What is that what that movie was called? Yeah, Memento. The, that was the one that came out before the Memento. Way better than this shit, bro. Man, you crazy. 
Come on, that man. shit was trash. Come on, man. Al Pacino. How old was Al Pacino in two thousand two? Well, that's the thing. Remember, he he was a thirty year, you know, what I'm saying, veteran. It had to be somebody of that age, because he said that he has been he's been a cop for over thirty years. So it had to be somebody that was seasoned. True. To, to play this role, bro. He was sixty two in two thousand and two, fam. You could have you could have found somebody that was uh uh early 50s 50 about around like 51 52 you know what I'm saying around that time that's more believable you know what I mean for some of the, for some of the stuff that he was doing the the, the chasing scenes I mean if you take the chasing scenes out of there then yeah but I think that you needed somebody that was that was that age appropriate to do that but when it comes to the chasing stuff like yeah it's just like and then like Al Pacino isn't like known for like being like a fit guy right yeah, but Robin Williams but neither now I I personally thought man and and like I said earlier I had I had to clear myself up not saying that I you think that what? Robin what I would have felt better if maybe like Mel Gibson or somebody like that would have did this shit. Mel Gibson can pull off a 30-year career in 2002. I can see that. I mean, how wild he is, his rigs and shit. Yeah. I like, he got that. the background for it. Like, nigga, Al Pacino ain't really been in no, like, real action movie. Not doing the shit he was doing in this. Because I don't even think he did that shit in Heat. Yeah, he did. He did do that in Heat. Word. He did it in Heat, and he did it in, and he did do it in 88 minutes, too. Um, Yeah. That was about, like, the only two, though. Well, adding this one, three, where you actually see, like, fucking Al Pacino fucking running around and shit. Yeah. Well, it, that late in life, anyway. Like, yeah, so it's like those three are, like, the only one I can remember him really kind of running around there. But not nah, like I see what you're saying. Um, and then hold on, that's weird as fuck too. Cause knowing that he's 60 in this film, or he was 60 during the record, 60, 61, yeah, during the, the filming of this, right? Right. That yeah. makes it even weird then because now if we talking about this nigga had 30 years on the force, that means that technically he came in at 30. Who the fuck becomes a cop at 30? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he was a detective. Maybe he had 30 years to be a detective. Yeah, maybe. Whatever, man. <laughs> Listen, a lot of this shit don't make sense, bro. A lot of this shit is off. You know what I'm saying? I'm At 30 years old, becoming a cop is crazy. I don't think he became a cop at 30. I just I think that. Not. You being a rookie on the force at 30, you got a nigga that's 28 <laughs> telling you what to do. Crazy. That's wild. Yo, that's funny, man. That's funny. Oh, man. I mean, look, 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 we picked it apart, but I mean, it's it's all cool. I've always I, I don't know. I guess I just looked at it more like I like looking at the oh man, what's the word I'm looking for? Like the predicament that he got himself in mm -hmm. after being on the investigation. And mm -hmm. then doing something, you know what I'm saying, as wild as shooting your partner, not in broad daylight because it was foggy, but shooting right. your partner in fucking daylight, and getting seen by the damn killer, and then the killer calling your ass telling you, I saw you shoot your partner, but you can't tell on me because I can tell on you. I just thought that was even mad. more crazy because why the fuck is the killer in the vicinity? Well, I mean, I guess, well, you got to think about it. Like, there were cops all over the place. Like, First of all, to even get away, like y'all just wasn't athletic. That's my point. Like, <laughs> That's my point. That's my point. You, know, you the nigga gets away, but at the same time, he ain't that far away enough to still be able to see you kill your partner. Nah, bro. 
<laughs> but you could you can survive three yeah three minutes under underwater. All right. Yeah, that is hilarious. Crazy. This shit is ridiculous. But let's get into coming soon, man. Let's do it. Yoga fire. Yoga flame. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say coming soon. I'm gonna say fire flames. Um oh. I'm gonna let you go first. Hi <laughs> <laughs> man, look man. Uh well when it comes to I mean the first three people, I mean, you can't really lose with you know Al Pacino, Robin Williams, and Hillary Swain. Uh, especially right. what Hillary Swain ended up becoming. But what I also think is crazy about Hillary is and I don't know if these things are related or not, but she had a show that came out last year. I forget what it was called, like Alaska First, the first Alaska, some fucking shit. It's like a medical remember. show, right? No, she was a cop. <laughs> and what I don't know if she's the same character. I don't know because I never watched the show. Okay. But um, you know what? Let me see. Let me see right quick. Like I'm I said, looking it up for you now. Go ahead. I'm looking okay, it up. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, check that out. Let's see if it's the same name. But um so, uh, but those three people, man, you know, very accomplished actors, um, Christopher Nolan, you know, both of us are huge Christopher Nolan fans. You weren't a big fan of this movie, but, um, but to have those four people involved in the project, you would have thought it would have been a little bit better. But, um, for me watching this movie when I was younger, watching it now, um, it does hit a little different now, but. I'm still going to give this movie a 3.5 mm-hmm. because I, I just felt like that the, the whole mystery part of it in the beginning and then of like trying to figure out like how he was going to climb himself out of this hole because mm-hmm. I just feel like I just feel like you know, watching this movie, like you're sitting there looking like, damn, like how how is he gonna figure this shit out? So mm-hmm. um so yeah, I'm I'm gonna give it a a three point five. Oh no, they're different people. Okay, it's yeah, it's Alaska so, Daily. Real quick though, in Alaska Daily, she plays a journalist working for a oh, newspaper. Okay. Um but this is the crazy part. Her name is Eileen Fitzgerald. Okay. In Insomnia, she was Ellie Burr. So they could have they could have did a little little twist right there. You know what I'm saying? Where you know what I'm saying she she swapped names and lives and stuff, or she could have got married and started to you know what I'm saying change her profession to being a journalist. If that was a possibility, that would have been dope. Uh, okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? So Ooh, cool. that was just something to throw out there. Um, okay. So for me, I'm not gonna lie. I'm giving this a two. Um, the the I wanted to give it a one, but the reason I'm giving it a two is is because of the casting and because of the director. Um, Christopher Nolan is is the man, of course. You know what I'm saying? Like long credited history. Um, I mean his man, his. <laughs> His his movies are top notch, and I feel like once again, if I would have watched this earlier, I probably would feel like how you feel about this. Yeah. But seeing it, you know, what I'm saying the first time, especially now, it's just it's it's so much to to throw me off. So I can't really um I can't really big that up. And then the cast was, like you said, amazing. Those three, you really can't go wrong with it. it. The only bad acting in this was the actress that played Kay. And that was in the scene where she, uh, where they went to the dump and everything else. That was possibly the baddest acting in the in the film. Well, no, not possibly. It was the, the worst acting in the film. But, like, that's the only thing that you could say as far as bad acting would go. Um there was no like there was nothing that you was confused about in this film at all as far as the story went because they covered they made sure to cover every damn thing you know what i'm saying 
Um, but it was just the little the little moments that we brought up in the pod that was just like, yo, this this ain't it. It dragged out for me. It was too long. I I'm sorry. I ha- I gotta get this a two. I mean, I respect it. I respect it. Yeah. But I mean, I, I understand why, you know what I'm saying, you would see this movie and be like, yo, this is one that you gotta watch. Because like if you just see the cast and you know what I'm saying, like just them, you're gonna be like, Oh yeah, this is this might be one of them ones. So I definitely get that. But um let's jump into coming soon. Let's do it. Coming soon to own on video and DVD. All right, man. So our next episode is going to be uh, a good one. This is going to be hilarious. Um, This is Grandma's Boy will be the next movie that we cover. A lot of quotables. Um, Not going to lie. For a comedy film, great cast. Oh yeah, yeah. They they put that together very well. Yeah, and great. and this is a this is the point where like Jonah Hill at the time was the person like he probably only got like three lines in this whole movie. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So definitely, definitely a film that if you haven't seen, you definitely want to watch before you listen to the episode. And if you haven't seen it recently, do the same. Um. And shit, that's it, brother. Listen. If you guys enjoyed this episode, if you didn't enjoy this episode, if you too was wondering how Al Pacino was going to cross that river log or the, that log river in those flat, you know what I'm saying? Those, those Stacey Adams hit us up. Let us know um, on socials. That's right. I said socials this time. We got the Twitter back. I figured out what happened. Um, there was a, a block on the Twitter because of a password dispute fix the situation we good to go you know what i'm saying view a nine pod twitter is back so hit us up on instagram twitter at view a nine pod it's all one word no spaces no underscores um and <clears throat> excuse me uh follow us on facebook join our group va pod watch group um make sure you subscribe and uh like all our videos on youtube make sure you hit that notification bell as well that way it'll alert you every time we drop a video on youtube and uh man leave some comments you know what i'm saying share with a friend you know what I'm saying get the get the message out there that viewer, viewers anonymous is alive and well um and also we have subscription episodes feel free to join up two dollars 99 cent a month it's not you know what i'm saying the most priciest thing but it's definitely worth every penny um and if you'd like to follow me hit me up on twitter at schools bronson link train the bio follow me everywhere else there and y'all can find me at uh S- foster eight on instagram and on x um at 28 minutes or less pod it's just on ig Follow the podcast, 28 Minutes or Less. Uh, drop the new episode. This is episode 145. I did uh, Power Book 3, Raising Canaan, Season 3. Um, ended up going in um, hard on the episode. You know what I'm saying? Went an hour mm-hmm. and 10. Nice. You know what I'm saying? So, I, but I don't know how. I don't know how. I don't know how. Sometimes, sometimes <laughs> but, it just happens, bro. But, um... But yeah, so Sometimes I went in on that. Breath for three minutes underwater. Yo, this guy. Uh, go check that out, man. On all major platforms, man. Uh, episode one forty five, man. Oh man, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being a part of this great experience we call Viewers Anonymous. Um, your support is always greatly appreciated. And um, until the next episode, uh, like they said in Hollywood. This is, oh, Oh, that's that's a wrap. Cut. I messed that that all up. (laughs) Oh.